Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to another episode of an honestly very hard challenge. In the last episode, Comet returned to his rightful place amongst the deities and the stars. Now he continues to watch over his family through the shelter of the safe havens, but it seems like a bigger storm is brewing now. Not everybody is fit to wait beneath the shelter of the trees. Unfortunately, Alara has caught herself a leech, and that was because she was just too reckless. She couldn't stand waiting around for her parents to return. She wanted to catch bunnies, so they lured her right over to the edge of the water. Now we only have one chance left to save her. Once her parents have a little bit of energy left over tomorrow, we'll have to see if they can make her way to her side before she takes damage. She'll be okay for one night. The leech is going to bite her tonight, so we just have to make sure that we can lick her wounds. Otherwise, Nicole is going to lose her very first daughter. And it just so happens to be her strongest daughter, too. I know I said in the last episode that she definitely wouldn't push Pernille away, but I'm not sure what would happen if she lost her baby. I don't think Nicole is prepared for that, especially because pretty much everybody else she's trusted has left her eventually, so this might be the final straw, but there's still a chance that we can save her. I know it looks like there's a ton of darkness between them, but I have my fingers crossed. I think we can do it if we play our cards right. So we'll be back to you soon, Alara. For now, let's go over to the center of the land again to see if we can move Comet's family around. Jericho has actually just taken over as the head of the family, so he has quite a bit of work to do. If I remember correctly, he was actually picking off right where Comet left off. He was trying his best to clear out all the grasses around here, probably to prepare for Celestite's next baby. Oh, and we have a... Crabbit over here? Oh no, wait a second. Is the bluebird trying to steal this crab at me? You know, I wonder if Clownfish would be the one to notice this. He does have that eerie connection to the wildlife after all. Now that he has a second gem, he can stray a little bit further away from the adults too. So I wonder if this is going to be the very first thing that he senses in his new role. A strange omen waiting for him far off in the grasses. He might not have the savannah horns like our prophets, but it definitely seems like the deities are whispering to him too. So as we go ahead and have him collect the crabbit meat over here, I wonder if he would take this as a sign that something dangerous is going to happen by the water. I suppose in a way, that could even be the deities trying to push our tribe closer to Nicole. Maybe they think this is a good way to finally bring the tribes together, if they could only save Alara, but of course they're far too far away. So since Comet's family doesn't realize that anything is happening with Alara, I wonder if instead Clownfish would grow worried about Aqua's safety. He did actually meet his big sister very briefly, before she went off in search of the Clownfish, of course. So I wonder if he thinks that something is going to happen to her. Maybe he would prod Jericho restlessly, tell him that he's sure that Aqua has danger coming her way. We have to go help her. We have to figure out where she went. I guess it wouldn't be too hard since she did claw a pretty good pathway over to the shores. But I'm not sure that Jericho is going to be willing to leave. Right now, he's more concerned with making sure that his mother is safe. She is about to have her next baby after all, three days remaining, so they can't exactly leave now. They have to make sure that she's going to be able to get to the nest over here, have her healing fruit, so they can't really risk sending their strongest warriors away. So he would try his best to sue this little brother, tell him that he knows Aqua is very, very strong. Jericho spent a little bit more time with her after all when they were very, very young, so he knows her a bit better. We'll have him go ahead and clear out the grasses over here to finish prepping the territory, while Mars, of course, picks up every last acorn that he can possibly reach. It really does seem like he enjoys this job better than his old one. Maybe he'll even invite little clownfish back to the stump over here, so he can tell him some more stories to soothe him. But for now, I think the only other creatures we have left to move... Yeah, Cadian is all out of turns too. That means we have to go back here to Awkward's new family. Is Morgana going to have our baby on this turn? No, two days remaining, so still a little bit longer to wait. But there is some exciting news too. Just before I started recording this morning, I saw that the developers added a brand new update to the testing branch. Not only is it supposed to be the very last update before they finally push it to the main branch of the game, but it turns out that they fixed one very, very pesky glitch in the process. So that weather glitch, the one that disrupted us during Adam's quest too. Supposedly that should be no more. That means if we take a look at Awkward's weather prediction skills, 
Yes, it actually says that it's still going to rain in four days. Oh my gosh, that is a load off. Could you imagine how much easier it would have been for us to complete Adam's quest? I mean, granted, then we wouldn't have had all the fun of starving in the mountains, but this means good things for you, Awkward. It means you've finally shaken the curse of the Banda Brothers. It's so fitting, too, that he's managed to shake off their influence just as he's about to start his family with Morganite. I wonder if it's just because he has more confidence in himself now. Maybe he's not as vulnerable to their tricks. So, you must be feeling very, very happy. He feels like the weight of the world is off his shoulders now. No more worrying about what's to come. So, it seems like this might be the perfect time for Aqua to finally take her leave, too. She has realized that this isn't exactly the best place for her to find any of those clown koi. So, now her mission is going to reignite in full. She is after any clown koi that she can glimpse. I know that Addy is going to follow right in her shadow, and I'm pretty sure that Longshot is going to follow, too. I guess you're going to have to leave those berries behind, actually, because we want you to catch up with everyone else. Oh, or maybe catch that leech for us? I guess that would be a pretty good parting gift, too. If we could maybe leave these two with one less leech to worry about, that would be excellent. You know what, Addy? Why don't you come on down here? If we could let that leech get just one step closer, there we go. You could swipe it down for us so you don't even have to worry about Aqua trying to pick it off of you. So come on over here, Longshot, and we'll have you follow in their shadow too. It's probably very sad for him though. He's kind of grown to think of Awkward as a brother to him, but that doesn't mean that he's not going to visit. In fact, once he's sure that Aqua and Addy are safe on the mainland again, I wonder if maybe he'll cart some gifts over here for all of their future kids. I can definitely see that. Uncle Longshot always bearing the best of gifts. Maybe he'll even find some new shells for them to use, too. Awkward and Morganite are currently using the shells as their own form of good luck. Since they don't have any healing fruits on this island, they have to use something. So, go ahead and try to crack open one of these extra little acorns for us. As yet another leech comes over to say hello. Well, there are quite a few more leeches in here than there were last time we crossed this gap. Maybe Clownfish was actually onto something. Maybe he can sense that some terrible tragedy is going to befall Aqua after all. We're going to have to keep an eye on her for sure. So, let's bring you into the water, I guess? Since this is our last turn, we'll go back there to move her out of the water as soon as possible. Everybody else is all tired out. But we're definitely going to want to move you first, huh, Lara? So let's go ahead and skip the day. As she cries out in pain overnight, the leech has finally bitten her, and that means she is bleeding now. So she hasn't taken damage, but if she goes without having those wounds licked on this turn, that's going to be the end of her lifespan. So first things first, Alara, let's have you jump back here. Probably charging toward the healing fruits, actually. I wonder if she thinks that this medicine is going to help her. She might even tear off those giant leaves to stop the bleeding. Like, honestly, I would have her go ahead and munch on this healing plant if it wouldn't completely destroy her chances of being saved. I think we're going to have to move her a little bit closer. Like, if we bring her all the way up here, I guess? You know what? Let's wait to move her. Just in case she can get a little bit further if we light up the rest of this area here. Now, the other thing we're going to have to watch out for is Pernil, of course. We do have a bluebird circling in the skies, and while he is pretty far away from her right now, that doesn't mean that he's not going to swoop closer. We should probably consider just sniffing around real quick too, just to make sure. No dangers, no wanderers. But the peaceful bear is still watching. I'm not really sure if that's a good thing or not. You would think that he would be pretty good at picking off leeches though. I wonder if that's why he never has any problems over here with the tide pools. Those big long fingers can probably pick off any leech that he catches. If only your family had made better friends with the peaceful bear, Nicole. You kind of gave up on him too early. So hearing that cry of pain in the distance, you know that she is going to rush off first thing. But Stone is still pretty far away. I wonder if maybe he would have heard too? Let's bring him out into the open so he can at least see Nicole rushing as fast as she can through the grass. Maybe as she leaps down into the darkness here, he would grow frantic too, just seeing her abandon their baby like that. And after everything he heard from his mother, this probably has him very, very concerned. Like, what is she going to do, actually abandon their own baby to the bluebirds now? I suppose she probably would have pushed her further back. 
maybe shoving her by accident just in her haste. But that'll at least allow Stone to get to her faster, his heart hammering in his chest. All that he can really do is huddle right around his baby and watch as Nicole tears her way through the weeds. So she only has two turns left. If we bring her right here... Oh, but those tempting bunnies are right at your side. Are the deities actually trying to distract you again? You're lucky that you don't have the same impatience that Alara shows, otherwise she might be lost for good. But since we did leave her with that one extra turn, we can scoot her right to her mother's side. And then we at least have one more turn to lick her wounds. So, as long as we cure the bleeding, she shouldn't take any damage. But she will still have a bit of an issue on the next turn. The bleeding is going to return again, so Nicole's job isn't over yet. Actually, is Pernil going to grow up on the next turn? Yeah, she'll be eight days old then, so that means Stone should be able to return to Nicole's side too. Maybe he'll be able to heal her once and for all. That way Nicole can focus on having her baby. After all, this has unfortunately caused her to miss having her baby on this turn, so she's going to be late one day. And I'm sure Alara's getting an earful right now. Oh, she is never going to hear the end of this. I can just see Nicole, like, cuffing her over the head as she licks those wounds and makes sure she's okay. You foolish, foolish girl, never let your guard down. Somebody you'll have nobody around to save you. And that day might actually come sooner than you think. With Nicole so close to the end of her lifespan, she must just be frantic right now. She only has three days remaining as it is. So knowing that her daughter is so, so reckless, that has to have her terribly worried. After all, she's hoping that she can eventually lead her family in a war against comets. And I guess she's going to have to kind of lead them from the stars, too. Her vengeance is enough to keep her soul alive. A lot of you have mentioned that she's probably going to end up being our very first evil deity, and I definitely like the sound of that. It should provide for us some interesting stories in the future, too. Oh, Nicadian. Much more peaceful back here, it seems. You've found yourself a little bunny. Go ahead and grab that for us, and then try to figure out where your Berhina ran off to. He must have gone even deeper into the grasses, actually. So let's have you follow in his shadow. Well, that reminds me too. You guys had some really good ideas for the Berhina's name, but I think we're actually going to name this guy Shadow. Not only has he followed an Akkadian shadow pretty much ever since these two met, but he's also very, very sneaky, as we've learned firsthand during our travels so I feel like Shadow is a very fitting name for him. Hopefully he doesn't decide to wander off too far, though. Actually, it kind of seems like he's tracking something right now. I wonder if maybe he found some more bunnies up here. Maybe there's even a whole colony of bunnies in this darkness. That would be very, very fortunate for you. If only you had somebody special to share it with. He's still under the impression that anybody close to him is just going to be in danger, so I know he's not actively looking for a mate, but I would still appreciate it if he managed to find somebody somewhere out there. So, Celestite, still no sign of your fish? They must have all truly skittered away. She was coming down here to see if she could fish with Sheba, actually, but she doesn't realize that she's already passed. So, let's just have you pace the shores, I guess. We'll see if you can catch any extra little fish as they swim up the stream. Maybe you'll even see the clown koi. That would probably be a good indication that Aqua's on her way home. Longshot, I'm sure you can't resist. Go ahead and grab one of those extra coconuts for the road. Or acorns, rather. I know that awkward wouldn't mind. We'll have him grab the last ones over here. Because Morgana is just about to have her baby. You must be so, so excited. He's probably pacing nervously around the nest right now. Go ahead and knock down a few more of those acorns for us too, Morgana. And then we'll leave you right there. You can just try your best to grab your own food for now. So, Adeline, why don't we have you take the lead? I'm a little bit worried that Aqua's not going to be able to see those leeches. We'll bring Longshot right here, where he can at least rest for the night, as Aqua claws her way to the shore. Addy should be able to jump right beside her. Still in the water, unfortunately, but we'll leave you super close by so you can guide her out in the next turn. Now, Jericho might be trying to show that he's not worried about Aqua, as he skips on over here to pick up the rest of the grass. Mars, if only you could move one step further. Oh, I think it's going to have to be Jericho this time. Go ahead and chase after that bunny so you have some food to bring back to Celeste. We'll have Mars go ahead and just pick up the acorns again, as always. 
and probably shout out that he sees another bunny in the distance too. So plenty more food for you guys to eat still. Yeah, I don't think that clownfish is so convinced. In fact, I wonder if you would actually try to sneak away. While Jericho was too concerned with the bunnies to notice, he could actually slip right into the shadows until he comes up by the shore itself. He might be a little bit too far away to see Aqua right now, but as she passes through again, I wonder if these two could team up. He must just be very, very concerned for her safety. So aside from you, Celestite, I think we're all out of turns. And you know, since you're going to have your baby in two days, let's actually bring you over to the tree stump. We want to make sure that you're very close by so you can just slink right into that nest. So now we should be ready to go ahead and skip the day. Let's go straight back to Morgana. We have to make sure that their baby is going to be healthy. Now, since Awkward no longer feels the effects of the Bandit Brothers, I wonder if their baby is going to be influenced by them instead. I can't imagine there would be much hope between them for the Bandit Mask, but let's at least cross our fingers that they're going to be healthy and that they won't have to... No pause? Oh no. Oh, that beautiful strawberry baby. She was perfect too. She actually had the velvet palm. I think that's what you have in there. And she had the bat wing as well. Oh, that is so sad. I can't believe that she passed away. Awkward. You must be so heartbroken right now. You were so, so sure that that shell was going to work just to keep the Band of Brothers at bay. I mean, I can't imagine that they were the ones to bring this misfortune upon you. They might be mischievous, but there's certainly no killers. Oh, I am heartbroken. She was literally perfect. I think she had the cracker jaw too. I'm so sad we didn't even get the chance to learn her name either. Oh, awkward. I guess that means that this might not be the best place for you guys to settle down. I wonder if they're going to seek out a different home? Closer to the healing fruit, of course. Maybe Morganite figures that that's why her baby didn't survive. She wasn't following the laws of the land, I guess. She wasn't following the tribe's traditions. And now there's no doubt Awkward is only going to see this as a place of misfortune. It's where he lost his original family. It's where he was swept away by the storms. There's no way that he's going to want to stay here another minute, and they only have two days left before the next storm rolls in, too. So I wonder if they would actually flee right now. Since Aqua's almost made it to the mainland, I wonder if they would call out frantically for Longshot to wait up. And luckily, since he was taking his sweet time wading through the water here, he would probably be able to hear them easily. So awkward, all you can really do is grab every last little acorn that you can reach. Which, unfortunately, isn't too many. You're probably more concerned about getting Morganic to safety. Oh, and speaking of which... Ooh, maybe we don't want to move her right now? Oh no, we are going to have to be so careful now. Maybe we can form, like, a barrier around her? If we bring Awkward over to this side, have Morganic move right up between them? Hopefully, that'll be enough to keep her safe. In fact, Awkward, why don't you actually sit up right here? That way, if any leeches come by on this side, they should get to you first. Then she'll at least be able to pick that off of you. Yeah, that was definitely not a good idea to move her first thing. We still have all of these other creatures to move after all. So we'll just have to keep going back there to make sure that nothing dangerous is sneaking up on them. And I guess, speaking of which again... Yeah, nothing dangerous out here. No new wanderers, unfortunately. No new dream babies. It would be so, so helpful if maybe Mist would send down just one more dream baby for you two. I mean, that is still the most heartbreaking thing that I have ever seen. They were so excited to start a family together. Now, let's not forget about this situation either. So, Alara still has a leech on her. The bleeding has started again. But thankfully, since Perniel has her second gem, it'll be much easier for Stone to get down here and hopefully help her out. In fact, let's bring Stone right here. Charging over to question Nicole, of course. Why on earth would you leave our baby alone like that? You know there are bluebirds circling overhead. But she would just point crossly at Alara. You see what your daughter has gotten herself into. What a mess she has made for this family. Oh, and imagine as Nicole storms over to the healing fruits. As she sees what a mess she's made of these secret objects, she is going to be livid. I really wish that we could have had a large just to eat one of these. That would just set her over the edge. 
Well, let's go ahead and have you eat this one then. She hasn't tampered with that. And then you can finally place down your nest right next to these healing fruits. Hopefully that'll provide a little bit of extra luck. And maybe you'll have a baby who isn't quite so reckless. Alara, though, since she is governed by wrath, I can't imagine that she's learned too much from this entire situation. In fact, she's probably more mad at her mom for getting mad at her. She was just trying to do her part, and she has plenty of bunny meat to show for it, by the way. Stone is probably just shaking his head, too, as he licks the wounds and finally picks the leech off of her. He is going to have to have a pretty serious conversation with her as well. Things can't possibly go on like this. And here's Perniel's chance to get her very first glimpse of her strong big sister. I wonder if she actually heard her take down that bunny over here. Maybe we could have her scoot all the way down to this meat and help her very carefully collect what she's caught. That way we can at least put that away in our stores. So now she knows firsthand exactly how strong her sister is, and that jealousy can finally ignite. Alright, time for a leech check. Any leeches swimming around you guys? You know, it almost looks like the bluebird is trying to watch out for you too. I wonder if maybe that's Comet's spirit? I'm not sure if he would be able to take on the form of a bluebird, to be honest, but it is interesting that this bird is so close to the safe havens. Maybe he's just trying to guide you on. Guide you toward your own dream baby, hopefully. I did always figure that he probably had a good connection with Mist. Now down you go, Celestite. Despite the bunnies hopping around the nest, we'll have you sit down right here so you can have your baby on this turn. Of course, you'll want to go ahead and munch on the healing fruit, too. Oh! Okay, and maybe you dig around in that nest a little bit too? Well, that was awfully fortunate. I'm not sure if your baby is going to appreciate being born in a big pile of dirt, but maybe that'll influence them too. So Mars, why don't we actually have you knock down some more acorns and then jump on top of the stump, just so you can keep a very good watch of the land. You haven't forgotten Nicole's threat after all and this would be a pretty good time for her to strike. Now likewise, Jericho, we'll want you to pick up that bunny meat and then skitter on over here too. You can go to the other side of your mother to keep her safe and sound. And you know, with all the baby drama, I actually forgot to check what gene we mutated here. Normal blood clotting. Is that for 10 generations of creatures? I know we can't use mutations in this playthrough, but I'm pretty sure that was for 10 generations, right? Well, that's interesting. That just goes to show how strong our families have been in this challenge. We've really gotten lucky with Miss Family. Alright, so Acadian, I think you're the only creature left to move in the mainland. Let's see if we can send Shadow. Yep, and it looks like he did actually catch a pretty big bunny back here, but he left the meat all on its own. That's not very helpful for you. I guess we'll have you go ahead and collect this bunny instead. Though if you scoot up one more tile, at least that would save it from being taken away by any bluebirds. It looks like you've also found a brand new stump back here, so that's good. You could actually use it on the next turn, Jerem. Call out another song of warning, perhaps. Keep all those wanderers at bay. So, Clownfish, let's have you skitter on down here. Past the rocks and the poison berries. I suppose we could even have you tiptoe your way down to the shore to get a first-hand look at the waves themselves. And since he's so absorbed in the ocean right now, I could see Aqua finding him instead. As she helps Addie claw her way to the top of the cliffs, she'll hear a strange splashing behind her and notice her little brother standing by the tide pools. I mean, I guess you could say this is kind of what you were looking for, huh? His name is Clownfish, so he does have a little connection to the clown boy. Let's have you go ahead and swipe down this bunny, though. Grab a little bit of extra food for you to share with your brother. And then we have to figure out what to do with Morgana and Longshot. I guess we'll have Longshot scoot down here. I don't think he's going to go much further, though. He knows that he's going to have to guide his brother's mate to the shore, so we'll just have her settle down right next to him for now. Too bad we can't find any little worms to dig up. It looks like you're going to have to just stay right there. And as for you, Addy, let's have you skitter on over here too. Gotta make sure that your friend's little brother is okay. So we should be ready to skip the day one last time. And that means two new babies are being born on this island. How fitting that it's from like our first enemies too. The first conflict between these two families here. We have Nicole's baby and we have Celestite's. 
one governed by the deities, and one governed by pure vengeance. I think we're gonna zoom in on Nicole's baby first, though. I wanna see if they're gonna look just like their siblings. Oh, an orange baby? Laloon? Well, that's a beautiful name, but I'm not sure if it suits such a fiery little baby. Oh, are those blood red claws, too? Oh, how interesting. She looks nothing like her siblings. She doesn't even look anything like her father. In fact, she looks a little bit more like Comet than anything. What kind of sign would that be? Can we maybe get a better look at her? You know, it doesn't even look like she has a scorpion tail. Yeah, just the regular old normal tail. Those blood red claws and horns. That is so mysterious. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think this is actually a message from Comet to tell her to stop this foolish war? Or is she just another one of... Nicole's sins reborn? Oh my gosh, what is this little mud puppy in the nest? How adorable is she? Oh, little kit. Well, I guess she was definitely influenced by all the dirt underneath her nest. It almost looks like she completely demolished this nest too. Like she rubbed mud all over her, masking those strawberry markings again. Oh, does she actually have some small connection to that strawberry baby? The one that we lost? How curious. Well, this definitely warrants some further investigation, especially with Awkward and Morgana on their way. But now with Nicole so close to the end of her lifespan, it seems awfully likely that we're nearing the end of our story. As she sends her babies out to war to take down Comet's family once and for all. I wonder if she's actually seeing this new baby as an omen, a sign that her family is finally ready. So in the next episode, we'll see if she can successfully guide her babies from beyond the stars. But for now, Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!